और बैठी हुआ देते मैं बताती हूँ डिस्क्रिमिनेशन के बारे में फ्रेंड्स इट इज सो अनोइंग Uh, no, you know, I tell you, I I think it ties in with the yes, yes. <laughs> um, you know, it ties in with what we are sitting here today for is that uh, stand-up comedy, to a very large extent, is storytelling, is is telling the truth about your life and telling sometimes an exaggerated truth about your life. And I realized that um, you know, when it came to lineups and stuff, people would be like, "Oh my God, you're really funny for a woman." <laughs> I was like, "Yeah." but it makes you realize that women have to work triply hard for someone to be interested in their story like i i know that like one uh, a fellow comic once came and told me tere ko pata hai na tere set mein sab sutta maarne jaate hain and i was like really what do i have to do what do i have to do to follow up that guy before me who did like a round of terrible jokes which everyone was like ha sachi correct aurat bahut time lagati kapde pehenne mein so correct this man is telling some real truths of life out here and then you go on stage and you're sort of you're definitely saying things that people have never heard before and actually that was one of the reasons i got into stand up was because i was like i don't i can't identify a narrative of where the woman is funny and not hideous like you know like otherwise they would be like are why po 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 and i was like kyun kyun why can't we be owners of our own stories and why can't we take the center stage not as an object of attraction i know that like corporate gigs uh, i still get like are female comedian shakal kaisi hai as a koi nahi puch raha jokes kaise koi nahi puch raha and then i and then and honestly i mean i i would like to say the pika that i would have totally been like a the pika padko on myself <laughs> but i like to eat <laughs> me too i oops i should be saying me too but uh, <laughs> i just asked for samosas and they had none i i will see you backstage yeah. by the snack plate with the chutney mixing with the sweet chutney oh, oh. yeah when is this oh should they just bring these on nahi nahi theek hai koi baat nahi koi baat nahi koi baat nahi let's flip it around so that uh, deepika doesn't get enough time to think this time um, and we'll keep it i'm very curious to see what yeah, these little chits are <laughs> by the way you guys are being judged these are on a score of 1 to 10 is your wife saying you're terribly boring yeah, like pretty, that that i'm very used to <laughs> the the secret to my marriage is success which is 17 years at, by just the way just say yes yeah yeah exactly just say yes great conversation you know, this mantra that all you men think like works <laughs> it's not my, a secret my, my anymore that the solution for this my mom and dad are somewhere here and i remember once i heard the margi when i was 10 or 12 and uh, mom dad told my mom that hey listen um we're going to solve all the big problems you guys can solve all the small issues right all the fiscal issues the monetary issues kids tuition education etc so my mom asked him what the hell are you going to solve <laughs> and he said well us guys will get together and solve the arab israeli conflict the cure to cancer <laughs> which is what men do get together have a couple of beers talk philosophy it's the parisian attitude <laughs> you guys do the heavy lifting yeah and get paid less clearly <laughs> yeah. well let's flip it around so Uh, one of my favorite comedians uh, chris rock you know made this comment that we live in a time and age i thought he was going to say you yeah, i know i was going to yeah. be like count out us this me this after me. this you you might bump it up a notch and get up to be oh my god yeah. so work here also yeah absolutely <laughs> i know like, and no pay me. <laughs> so chris rock said uh, <clears throat> we live in a time and age where we are, everything is so politically sensitive that the gig for a stand up comedian is borderline pushing the envelope between the last bastion of free speech right and maintaining that professional ethic and i can clearly see how lines can get blurred and things get taken out of context etc what what's your stance on this being in the profession you know i think actually political correctness is not the biggest danger to comedy i think that in fact we have lived in a world where um easy laughs have been derived from too much cruelty mm. and the fact that we are pushing back you know the fact that the world is pushing back and saying this is not okay that you can't like if you're if you're hurting somebody um you're perpetuating a very harmful stereotype be better mm. and 
I mean, of course, we're all going to make mistakes on the way. We're all going to do terrible things. And I have said several, and done several politically incorrect things that I sorely regret right now. But having said that, you know, the push towards political correctness as the bastion of free speech, I, I really don't think it's a problem. And, and the truth is that because a lot of the narrative has been largely male, a lot of the narrative has been that ko time lagta hai kapde penne mein, usko driving nahi aata hai, oh no, wow. I'm like, you know, in Saudi Arabia, women are not allowed to drive, so give us some time. Nobody's like, aray, mardo ko saadi nahi penne aati. Give them some time to learn. So, so it's sort of, it, you know, I, I think that, uh, in fact, if anything, um, you know, not, not maybe curtailing voices, but giving mics to, or giving stories yeah. to people whose stories have not been heard before is going to actually lead us to a more inclusive and empathetic world. And women will actually feel, because I mean, I don't know, maybe we, like women are more, somebody told me this recently, ki, Aditi, yaar, you know, sometimes you're a lot more cruel in real life than you are on stage. And I was like, you know what, it's true, because I, I feel terrified to sometimes say some really, really cruel, funny things, which I know my male friends will like gas off with confidence and someone's like throw money at them or whatever. Um, but so I, I think that when you hear more empathetic stories, when you hear more kind and more inclusive stories, you just have a more empathetic, inclusive and kind world. Thanks for that. Uh, Deepika has got to run after this. We'll continue the panel, but let, let me pose a question to you. And a fellow venture capitalist recently wrote about, uh, I don't know if you guys have read this article about the return of investment on any movie that has been made in 2018 over a budget of 50 crores. Have you read about this? No. It's fascinating. Um, so every, every movie, this is the last question for Deepika. I'm getting all these cues. Um, in 2018, all Guys, the movies... like, are we under attack or something? Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> <laughs> now you know what I feel like. Samosa uh, yaar hai. <laughs> <laughs> so all movies made over a budget of 50 crores. Over. Over. In 2018, uh, there are many data points that were remarkable, including the extremely poor ROI on all movies made by the cons, but leave that aside. <laughs> the, uh, I had to slip it in there. Uh, the top five movies, purely in terms of return on investments, have, off the top five, four have been women-centric themes. That's, I mean, that, that, that's saying something. Um, and do you think this trend will continue, being in the industry? And I think it's, I think it's pretty awesome that someone ran this analysis. Um, so, just to give you numbers, so, uh, the return on investments on real estate in India was about 7%. The cons returned 9%. Uh, Women-centric movies, the top four out of the 10, out of the five, sorry, returned well north of 25%. Um, yeah, which is remarkable. Um, be happy to share this link with you guys, but, uh, but, but what do you think of this? I think it's amazing, and I think, look, I think, I think it's, it's nice for us to say women-centric or female-centric at, say, at, uh, you know, at a moment like this when we're talking about female role models. Having said that, when it comes to creativity, we need to look beyond female or male. It's about the film. If the film didn't work, you know, it's okay, it's a different thing that the, the you know, the, the films that the Khans did didn't work. But say there was a film like Andhadun that was led by Ayushman. Um, so I think that it really boils down to the script itself. But yes, I see a trend which is films that, you're right, films that are being led by women, um, are doing much better. Also, we're in a place today where directors are changing roles. And that's unheard of. You have, you know, if you have a script that sort of has a male protagonist, and suddenly directors are like, one second, let me just flip that. Let me just make that a female protagonist and then go to so-and-so with the film. So you hear of a film that was offered to a male actor like two, three years ago, and it's coming back to you now with a female protagonist, is a huge achievement, you know. Um, but as a creative person, I would not like to make this distinction of like, 
you know, male-led and female-led and all of that. I would just say that I think great content is what is really working right now. And I think a lot of that has to go to the audience. They're ready for that. I don't think it matters today anymore who is in the movie. It really depends on the kind of story that's being told, um, uh, you know, how well the director's telling that story. Uh, you know, so there's a lot of these factors also, I think, that are playing a very, very important role in, uh, you know, in the success of these films. Sure, sure. You know, it's not, it, I, I don't think you can blindly say, okay, so-and-so's in the film, so let's go and watch it. I think 2018 was a clear yeah. sort of, um, Watershed, yeah. you know, on that, yeah. you know. Um, so you have to sort of, the pro, right from the promo, the posters, all of that, I think that the audience has that pulse. I think they know instantly from the minute that first trailer goes out, they know at that very moment whether they want to watch that film or not. Of course, there are films that may not be sort of trending right from the start, but then they release on that weekend and there's that word of mouth that sort of, you know, helps elevate the film. Um, but yes, I think gone are the days when you just had like a big star on a film poster and that film worked. Yeah. Thank you. I don't know if you're going to, uh, are you going to kidnap her? Yeah, you're going to kidnap Deepika? Okay. I don't need my samosas. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> so we're going to unveil the book at this point before Deepika leaves and then get back to the panel. Uh, so let's, let's have you guys steal the show. And I'm going to step away for a second. नहीं, I think I think जैसे दीपिका ने कहा that we came from a family जहाँ पर girl and boy में कोई difference नहीं किया गया था। My parents were very supportive जब मैंने कहा कि मुझे actor बनना है। In fact, my mother gave up her job ताकि वो मेरे साथ एक जगह से दूसरी जगह तक जा सके। Of course, protective थे because ये industry उनको मालूम नहीं थी। तो मुझे अकेले मुझे अभी भी याद है first meeting पे जाना था तो mom and dad both went and took me for the first meeting of my modeling assignment। But मैं lucky थी that my parents were very very supportive। um, but having said that, we can't ignore this thing that in the world there is a difference hai. and I think what we are constantly working towards as women who are in a position to is bridge that gap. So we are 
इम्पॉर्टेंट पर्सनैलिटीज चाहे वो एक्टर्स हों या स्पोर्ट्स में हों या राइटर्स हों आई थिंक देयर एजेंडा इज टू गिव अक्रॉस द पावर वुमन डेफिनेशन एंड या ईच वन ऑफ आस ट्राइंग टू डू दैट स्टार्टिंग विद दे दे प्यार दे 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 प्यार दे आएगी और अभी मर जावा की शूटिंग चल रही है सो मर जावा विल बी समवेयर इन अक्टूबर एंड बाकी आई विल अनाउंस समथिंग सून अगेन दर सम इंटरेस्टिंग टॉक्स और तमिल में तीन रिलीजेज हैं अभी फेबररी में एक रिलीज है एंड देन अप्रैल में एक रिलीज है एंड एंड ऑफ द ईयर अनादर वन एंड तेलुगु विल ऑल्सो हैव टू फिल्म हेलो क्या स्क्रिप्ट होगी जी इट्स अ रॉम कॉम लव रंजन आफ्टर सोनू की टी टू यू नो इज इज प्रोड्यूसिंग दिस फिल्म एंड अकी सर ने डायरेक्ट की है इट्स अ वेरी न्यू एज रोमांटिक कॉमेडी मैं ज़्यादा डिटेल्स नहीं बता सकती अभी बट ऑल आई कैन टेल यू इज़ दैट इट्स गोइंग टू बी अ रोल इट्स गोइंग टू बी एन अमेजिंग फिल्म फॉर एवरी फैमिली लाइक एवरी एज ग्रुप टू वॉच तबू मैम है उसमें अजय सर है एंड मैं हूँ अभी वो स्टोरी क्या है मैं नहीं बता सकती बट बहुत ही इंटरेस्टिंग है एंड आई एम श्योर बी वी लाइक इट श्रीदेवी जी जी द फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑलरेडी रिलीज हो गया है जो अभी अभी रिलीज हुआ है लास्ट वीक जनवरी में एंड इट्स गॉट अ वेरी वेरी गुड रिस्पॉन्स बट बिकॉज माइंड इज अ स्पेशल अपेरेंस तो वो दोनों पार्ट्स में यू नो दो तीन सीन इधर हैं और थोड़ा बहुत सो इट्स स्प्लिट बिटवीन बोथ द पार्ट्स एंड वी गॉट अ वेरी गुड रिस्पॉन्स एंड फर्स्ट फेब को सेकेंड पार्ट रिलीज होगा जी श्रीदेवी बंगलो सी आई डोंट नो द डिटेल्स ऑफ इट मैंने भी वही पढ़ा है जो ऑनलाइन ट्विटर पे आता है और आई डोंट थिंक आई शुड कमेंट ऑन इट कि अभी उसमें राइट्स थे या नहीं थे आप मेरे को उतनी डिटेल्स मालूम नहीं है सो आई डोट नॉट लाइक टू कमेंट ऑन दैट जो मैं हर साल करती हूँ काम और बहुत सारा काम एंड आई जस्ट होप दैट लोगों को वो काम पसंद आए थैंक यू थैंक यू